Thanks for joining us on Newsmaker. A fast-moving object the size of Manhattan is hurtling towards our solar system, and it will make its closest pass to Earth on December 17th. Comet, asteroid, or something else? What if the sky isn't as quiet as we think? What if right now, something massive is slipping in from the dark? An intruder from another star cutting across our solar system? And what if this time we've spotted it early? With months to watch whatever happens next. On July 1st, a telescope in Chile quietly picked up something unusual drifting in from deep space. It wasn't just another comet. This one wasn't born in our solar system at all. NASA's Atlas survey first spotted it moving out of the darkness near the constellation Sagittarius, a faint light nearly 420 million miles away. Follow-up checks quickly revealed it had been hiding in older data too, observed weeks earlier by telescopes in Hawaii, South Africa, and even by the Zwicky Transient Facility in California. At first, it was just another strange object with the placeholder name A11PL3Z, but its orbit told a bigger story. Its extreme tilt and wild trajectory made one thing clear. This visitor had come from the stars beyond, slipping into our neighborhood after who knows how long wandering the galaxy. The name became official. 3i slash ATLAS, the third interstellar object humanity has ever caught. Now we have a visitor from another star system. Again, we've been looking for these for decades. We expected it to show up at some point. Here's the solar system in orbit around the center of the galaxy, drifting through space. Something's bound to visit us that escaped another star system. When astronomers first locked eyes on it, the comet looked like nothing special just a dim plus 18th magnitude dot near Sagittarius and Serpent's Cauda. No glowing tail, no flashy outbursts. Just an icy traveler streaking toward the sun at nearly 60 kilometers per second. Early guesses put its size anywhere from a few kilometers across to something larger, and calculations showed it posed no danger to Earth. Its closest brush would be late October 2025, when it swings just beyond Mars's orbit about 200 million kilometers away. Mars itself will get the real close pass, less than 0.2 astronomical units away on October 3rd, close enough for spacecraft orbiting the planet to possibly get a front row there. look. And Mars will have the closest approach. Psyche had the approach on, on September 4th. The, the Mars spacecraft will be closest on October 3rd, and the um, JUICE will be closest on November 4th. This discovery stood out because it came early. Oumuamua in 2017 and Borisov in 2019 were both spotted only after they were already well on their way out. 3i slash ATLAS was different. It was caught inbound, still months away from the sun. That gave scientists a head start and telescopes all over the world raced to gather data. Then came a surprise. Just days before the official announcement, the Vera Rubin Observatory, still in its commissioning phase, had already snapped nearly 50 images of the comet. Those images revealed it wasn't so quiet after all. A thin veil of gas and dust was blooming around it, growing by more than 50% as it closed in. And even stranger, a dust tail was pointing not away from the sun, but toward it. It was an odd, almost defiant gesture, but not without precedent. Other distant comets have shown this trick before. Rubin's data gave scientists a clearer sense of scale. The nucleus alone measures about 5.6 kilometers across, give or take. Unlike Oumuamua, it hasn't shown any mysterious accelerations that hint at hidden forces or strange physics, though astronomers will keep watching as it nears the sun. For now, 3i slash A-T-L-A-S feels like a gift. With JWST in orbit, Rubin preparing for full operations, and Mars spacecraft sitting nearby, humanity has more tools than ever to study an interstellar wanderer. And beyond the numbers, there's the larger realization. These visitors might not be rare at all. The galaxy could be full of them, slipping by unnoticed, until our instruments became sharp enough to catch them rushing through the solar system, carrying the secrets of other worlds on their icy skins.
By late summer, the story of three, I slash, A-T-L-A-S had grown stranger still. As the comet moved inward, the first numbers coming from JWST painted a picture of something far more massive than expected. It was shedding nearly 150 kilograms of material every second, and yet its motion hardly budged, showing only the faintest hint of acceleration, less than 15 meters a day. For something so visibly active, that stubborn refusal to drift from its predicted course could only mean one thing, an object of staggering heft, billions of tons heavier than anything else humanity had caught crossing in from interstellar space. That sheer weight sparked debate. A preprint circulated with thousands of data points gathered from telescopes across the world, arguing that this was a statistical oddity. Smaller interstellar debris should have appeared first. By the odds, something of this scale was meant to be rare. Avi Loeb, ever the provocateur, suggested that if one were feeling bold, an artificial explanation could be entertained. A cosmic thought experiment pointing to its alignment and some odd hints in its chemistry, like nickel seemingly unaccompanied by iron. But to most astronomers, the case was simpler. They looked at the coma, the tails, the gas flow, and shrugged. It looks like a comet. It does comet things, said NASA's Tom Statler. The mystery in their eyes wasn't whether it was natural, but why it was so different. And the differences kept piling up. Observatories working in tandem, TESS, Hubble, SPHEREX, JWST, showed a chemistry that didn't line up neatly with the comets closer to home. The cloud around it was loaded with carbon dioxide nearly eight times richer in CO2 than water vapor. SphereX traced its halo out to 23 kilometers, while Hubble pulled out the faint outlines of multiple tails, some streaming behind and others curiously angled forward. Even before it reached Jupiter's orbit, it was already awake and active, suggesting its ices were primed to vaporize at distances most comets would still be asleep. That detail hinted at its birthplace likely somewhere near the CO2 frost line of a distant star system, where sunlight was weak, but carbon dioxide could cling to frozen rocks. The coming months will push it even further into view. In early October, it will graze close to Mars, as earlier said. By the end of that month, it will skim by the sun at a distance not much farther than Earth's, though our planet will be hidden behind the glare, forced to wait until December to watch it re-emerge. And if its path holds, by March, it may drift near enough to Jupiter's neighborhood for Juno to catch it in passing. Each encounter is a chance to peel back more layers of the puzzle. Meanwhile, the Rubin Observatory has begun doing what it was built for, rewriting the catalog of the solar system. In only its first hours of full operation, it flagged thousands of new asteroids, a reminder of how blind we've been to the small, faint wanderers moving all around us. With Rubin scanning the skies night after night, astronomers expect to spot not just more asteroids, but more visitors from beyond. Enough, perhaps, to understand why the first few we've caught are giants rather than crumbs. For now, 3i slash ATLAS hangs between certainty and anomaly. It behaves like a comet, but its size, its mass, and its carbon-rich breath mark it as something otherworldly, even among other interstellar travelers. The object feels less like a curiosity and more like a challenge, forcing scientists to rethink how worlds form in the shadows of other suns and how fragments from those systems might wander the galaxy. In the words of Loeb, it may be best not to judge the book by its icy cover. Whatever its pages hold, 3i slash ATLAS has already become one of the most captivating stories ever to sweep through our skies. And now, the comet is no longer just a dim blur. Fresh imaging from Gemini North has turned 3i slash ATLAS into something far more tangible. A tight, glowing shroud of gas and dust wrapped close around its nucleus, the kind of sight that feels alive in motion. As it barrels toward its closest pass to the sun at the end of October, just inside the orbit of Mars, that cloak will only swell and shift reshaping itself with every degree of warmth. 
Some early size estimates even stretched the nucleus into the realm of 20 kilometers, a figure that will surely be revised but still speaks to the scale of the thing. Its orbit is extreme, a path so stretched and unbound that its eccentricity sits near 6.2. No gentle ellipse, but a deep slash through the solar system before it disappears again into the dark. If all goes well, sky watchers on Earth may even get their own glimpse after it re-emerges from behind the sun late next year, though that will depend on the skies cooperating. So, as Gemini sharpens the view and the coma begins to stir and reshape itself on approach to the sun, every pixel gathered isn't just about one comet. The closer 3i slash ATLAS draws, the more it feels like the sky has staged a live experiment right above us. Every comet is a performance in light and dust, but this one comes from beyond our neighborhood, carrying foreign ices into a solar system about to put them under fire. By late October, it will skim its tightest arc around the sun, and if fortune plays its hand, a coronal mass ejection may strike it head on. The last time we saw such a collision, Back in 2007 with Comet Enxhe, the result was a tail ripped apart in real time, shredded and carried by solar wind like smoke in a storm. Should Atlas endure the same trial, the spectacle won't just be beautiful, it will be science in motion. The sun's magnetism traced across an alien body and the comet's chemistry laid bare by the blast. And before that test, there is Mars. On October 3rd, as aforementioned, the comet will pass close enough that orbiters circling the red planet may get their own look. Instruments designed for Martian skies could suddenly find themselves capturing a wanderer from another star. High-rise might resolve the coma in detail unreachable from Earth, while ultraviolet spectrographs track the gases pouring off its surface. For the first time, humanity may witness an interstellar comet not just through Earth's telescopes, but through the eyes of another planet's machines. A flyby without ever sending a probe. Then comes the silence. By December, Atlas will slip behind the sun, a vanishing act forced by the geometry of orbit. For weeks, maybe months, Earth will lose its line of sight. Whether the comet survives that blackout hole, cracks into pieces, or bursts into fresh plumes will only be known when it re-emerges, its body scarred or steady from its brush with the sun. Even while hidden, instruments like SOHO and Parker Solar Probe may catch hints of its passing, indirect flashes of a story continuing beyond our reach. And the other side of all this is the Rubin Observatory, newly awake and sweeping the sky with a depth we've never had before. Its relentless cadence promises to transform chance discoveries into a systematic count, finding the faint and the overlooked, mapping out whether Atlas is an anomaly or simply the first of many giants. In that census lies the answer to a bigger question. What kind of rubble the galaxy really holds and what kind of stories those fragments bring with them? Whatever the answer, ATLAS has already expanded the script. It isn't just another icy rock. It's proof that fragments from other stars carry their own histories, written in carbon, dust and orbit. Each is a capsule of its birthplace, a frozen page from an alien protoplanetary disk. Soon, it will vanish behind the sun, maybe torn apart, maybe stronger than before. When it returns, scarred or whole, it will carry answers we've never had. But here's the real question. If this is just one visitor, how many more are already on their way? 